Welcome back to another episode of the Nutrition Spot Podcast. Today we're going to talk about how to stop eating when it tastes really good. Yes. It's pretty common. Because you, you know those meals or those foods, it just tastes so dang delicious. You're like, there is no way I will ever stop eating a bag of chips till they're all gone or like eating whatever your thing is, right? Whatever your thing is, the cake or the, it could even be like a meal, like pizza, things yep. that just taste amazing. I'd say pizza would be a big one for me, my past self. Yeah. Ice, ice cream, bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. Restaurant meals. Restaurant meals. Yeah. Dessert. Like how many people actually stop eating a dessert when you're full or do you just eat it till it's gone? You know, those type of foods. So imagine whatever your food is. Maybe it's multiple foods. Maybe it's situations. We're going to talk about – first, we're going to talk about kind of why. Why you struggle to stop eating those foods when you're full and then talk about how to – Be the person who can effortlessly stop eating them when you're full, no matter how much is left on your plate. The why is so important yeah. because the whole approach that we've been trying for so many years of like, I just should, I should stop right now, like this is bad, hasn't been working. And the why will explain why. Yeah. And it actually is probably one of the reasons why you feel that way. So like one of the first things is how you go in to that meal so you know that this is one of your foods or this is a meal that you struggle with or this is the dessert that you tend to eat too much and feel guilty for if you go in with a set like expectation of okay I can only eat like this much of it you're bound to fail Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're already setting yourself up for failure unfortunately because it triggers that like psychological switch, right? <clears throat> yeah. Like internally, you know you love that. You know you love to eat that. But if your brain is saying like, we can only have whatever amount, limited amount, even yeah. if that was enough, even if that's all your body really wanted to eat, that brain game that's happening inside <laughs> up there that versus down. toddler. Yeah. yeah. It's a your brain. Your brain's like, oh my gosh, get it now. We don't know just that restriction it puts yes. this force let's like talk about it in a little bit of example like let's say let's say you let's say it's ice cream i'm just trying to think of something that you could like measure out and you're like okay i'm only gonna eat half a cup of it so then while you're scooping up like that half a cup of ice cream you're already like your brain's already like oh man 100 percent, half a cup like yeah. I wish we could have more. Oh, that's not fair, you know? And then while you're eating it, you're like, oh no, there's only like this much left. And am I, you know, and is this going to be a, like, I'm still going to want more. And like the thoughts around every single bite are based on that quantity already. And you're so focused on the quantity that you're not even really enjoying the ice cream. And then when you hit the end of that, just because something, some other external rule said you're only allowed to have half a cup, you're already like, I wish I could have more. I think this would still happen to me if I did this. Yes. If I was like really in the mood for ice cream and I all of a sudden started to bring back external rules and be like portioned out a half a cup, which I don't do that anymore, obviously for many reasons. I just re- eat out of the container, to be honest. Yeah. I would probably be like, this sucks. I this If this is happening to you when you're eating your favorite food and you're, you're you've taken your portion and you take your first few bites and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I'm for sure going to want X, you know, like another portion of it. Yeah. That's a pretty good indicator that there's like these external rules that are inflating, They're just disrupting yes. your current situation, your current enjoyment of it, disrupting your mind-body connection. So it's just, yeah. it's not going to be a clear signal from your body that you're full. Exactly. That, you, that you're satisfied. Well, like, and if you come at that same example from like the abundance mindset or like the like non portioned controlled, which is going to be very scary if you feel like you can't stop. But if you like, like Shana said, eat out of the container and you told yourself, I'm going to eat as much as I need to feel good, to feel satisfied. 
And again, you guys, when you have food freedom, overeating doesn't feel good. So you don't want to overeat and feel stuff. But in the beginning, we're still figuring that out, right? So even if you sat down with the whole carton and you ended up only eating about half a cup. That's I mean, exactly it. It's such a different experience. And you're like, oh, I'm full. I'm actually good. Yeah. I love your rice example. Yeah. Same thing with rice. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it's the same kind of thing as ice cream one, but. So Nikki talks about like, okay, so if you say, yes, the same thing, if you told yourself or that your, your diet told you, you can only have a quarter cup, half a cup, whatever the portion is of rice with your meal, you portion it out and you have that like scarcity mindset around it. You're like, dang, like I'm really hungry. I would, you know, X, Y, and Z, the thoughts go through your mind. But if you had served your dinner on like a bed of rice, like we're talking abundance here and you're like, I've got plenty, you know, in your mind, you're like, there is no shortage here. Yeah. Then you're just eating your meal, not focused on the rice. Like you're like, I'll have a little bit with this bite and I'll have some, you know, and you just carry on and you're, you're, you're in the enjoyment because there's no lack. And most likely what would have happened in that situation, you probably just ate like half a cup, you know, like you're not going to, depending on everything's black and white, but that's, that's what we're saying. I think that's such a a great example as well. Yeah. Your body can lead you. Your body can lead you. And I know that that's, that's kind of a bit further down in the food freedom journey. If you're, if you're new to food freedom, you're like, but my body doesn't lead me. That's the problem. Yes. But we're saying if you're trying to portion and limit yourself, that's not going to be helping you get to that body leading goal either. That's going to keep you wanting more and wanting more. And even if you've eaten that half a cup of ice cream and you're full, but your brain is still wanting more, you might not have ice cream. You might, the cravings might turn into like, well, now I still need something so I'm going to have like chocolate yes. chips or I'm going to have cheese or I'm going to have, you know, like you're still looking for other stuff because you're not mentally satisfied. That was so me. I was all the things. <laughs> so we talked about that. Okay. So we were going to talk and we want to talk about the mindset also going into the meal of feeling yeah. guilty, right? Like the guilty yeah. feelings. Yeah. So, yeah. So a lot of those foods that taste so good, we already associate them with being bad. <laughs> yeah. Because of diet culture, right? Like, yes. Yeah. If it tastes good, what is it? Can't be like, good. Yeah. If it tastes good. People always say this, used to say this to me when I was a dietitian. Oh, if it tastes good, it's bad for you or something like that. You know, like we just automatically have been conditioned to that. So there's a lot of guilt. And if we've had past experiences of overeating these foods, that doesn't help the guilt either. But if you're going, if you're feeling guilty or ashamed or frustrated with yourself while you're eating those foods, it's also not going to help you stop eating them, unfortunately. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that can play a really big role in a lot of people's lives, right? And or like if you've eaten something and you feel guilty afterwards, it can have like a rebound effect, right? Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, because you kind of – and I think – I mean, so everyone's going to have different reasons why the guilt does that. But sometimes like for me, I found the guilt kind of pushed me into that like scarcity Mm -hmm. thinking because I would felt so guilty that I was eating the ice cream that then I needed to eat it all so I didn't have it in my house anymore Mm. or it didn't tempt me anymore that kind of thing you know okay yeah that was a big trigger for me I remember you saying that one and for me it was like the the guilt of like I said I wouldn't and then I did Mm -hmm. so now I have to make up for it and so it would really predict how my next day would go and I think like I would be thinking that I would be doing the right thing, but I'm just setting up more scarcity, all yeah. triggered from guilt. Yeah. Or the other type of guilt is like, well, I'm going to have this anyway, so I might as well just, you know, go for it. And you kind of like that throwing in the towel, you know, you feel like you've done something wrong. You feel like you've been bad. Yeah. So then you just kind of yeah. go crazy and you ignore, you ignore your hunger cues or your fullness cues because you're like, well, I might as well just really enjoy this. Yeah. While I'm allowed, while I'm allowed to have it, while I'm giving myself permission to have it. You know, it's, um, this is just later on in the talk. We, I'm just thinking, like the craziest thing about food freedom is that it eliminates all of this weirdness, all of these extra desires to overeat, and you get to really enjoy the food. Like it's just yeah. the two things, right? It's just. It's so Amazing. funny. It feels so backwards. And what it's, yeah. it's it's like what we're searching for in diets and then we're not getting because it's triggering all this weirdness. 
and it just it just makes the food just meh. like neutral so that it's just you just literally can eat these foods and ever and stop eating them even though they're super tasty yeah yeah it's wonderful so <laughs> well, another one that could be setting you up for this like oh it just tastes so good is like a biological situation right so if mm -hmm. like this was you for a big time right like you would not eat all day because of the night before yeah. and then just like the hunger signals in your blood were just like raging yes and our taste receptors are super heightened in that situation because they're like yeah. you've got to find food like are you just not tasting things properly so your body's yeah. like, get food. It tastes amazing. Like you need it. So you taste it and you're like, wow. And I think this was me as well because I was chronically under eating. Like I'd eat all day, mm -hmm. but not enough calories. I was going to say that too. Or saving up for like, it, uh, this happens a lot when people are saving up to eat yeah. out or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then, and so it, it tastes really good. So I'd get home, I'd be allotting all my calories for dinner, but mostly my ice cream that's coming after dinner. Cause I was like one of those mm -hmm. people that would like eat something healthy first before da, 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 right. Yeah. And then because I'm chronically under eating for a long time, the ice cream tastes next level. It tastes next level, but that's like a false, it's like a heightened taste because your body's like screaming for energy. Yeah. And then you overdo it and then it creates the whole cycle again. Right? Yeah. And imagine if you if you have a hard time picturing that, even imagine that with like thirst, you know, when you're like so dang thirsty and you just like get your mouth on some water. It doesn't even matter if it's like lukewarm yeah. water bottle that was sitting out for a day. You're just like, oh, my God. I know. I literally, oh, in those situations, I'm like, what is the best invention? Like, I'll say yeah. something weird like that. I just have like this euphoria. Oh, we have yeah. water. But it's because your body is like, that's what you need. It's <laughs> like, yeah. wake up. And it's sending you like positive reinforcement signals. Like, get it now. So yeah. that's a really good example. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so we have the biological. We have going in with the portions, a set amount in our head. We have the guilt. Um, those all kind of are under the, like the scarcity umbrella, essentially. And scarcity, do you know what? I just want to say something. Facebook people did not like when I use the term scarcity thoughts around food. They're like that. No, scarcity means there's not enough of it. And I had to be like, that's exactly it. You can <laughs> think that there's not enough food. Yeah. Okay. Just as much as there's not enough food. But anyways, um, so I feel like scarcity thinking is really one of those things too in terms of those foods that taste really good is you just want to eat it all now. Mm -hmm. You know that feeling of like, it's so good. I want to eat now. And you might not think that that's scarcity, but it is in this, it's, your brain is so funny. Like it is because you just, it's so good. You just like want it all for yourself now. 100%. now. And um, I feel like, again, restaurant foods are like this or those meals if it's like the pizza and things like that. Um, or even I guess the, the the desserts would be into this one too. And the biggest thing for me to help stop the overeating when the foods are giving me that trigger when I because I, I can feel it like when I'm starting to eat and I start eating quite fast mm. and I'm kind of disconnected from the eating experience. I'm like, this is so good, and I start to like shovel. Mm. I have to like clearly stop that mm -hmm. because it's it's such a it's such a weird phenomenon that our brain kicks us into. Mm -hmm. And I always try to remind myself like. Yes, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, like, slow down mm -hmm. and get into it. it. Get into it. Like, and I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of going deep here, but I wonder if it's like that whole like the guilt we feel feel with the pleasure that's triggering us to like almost like frantically eat it. Like, do do you ever, have you ever experienced that like frantic eating kind of or like eating it really fast because it's so good? During my like when I was not food free, I had major situations that you're describing. Like, okay, <clears throat> like I I can remember I baked a cake and I was in that period where I was like not letting myself bake cake because I was already in that period of like if I bake then I'm gonna eat it all. Yeah, and I had like I was standing over the kitchen sink being like. I'm just gonna have another piece. I'm just gonna have another bite. And like the I'm watching the cake disappear. You know, I'm like, yeah, what is wrong with me? And I yeah. had a similar situation with ice cream eating it in my car because I couldn't wait to get home. So right. yeah. Oh yeah. If you guys are listening, like we've been there. Yes. Yeah. 100%. So like a good little like 
mindset shift there is just it's just really just reminding yourself that like if it tastes that freaking good enjoy it slow down like chew it taste it like Mm -hmm. make that taste last you a while because it is so true that like our brain and our stomach are a little disconnected and you know if if we're eating really fast like that we're gonna eat to an overly full feeling before our brain really registers that we're full so we do want to slow down really enjoy that but also on that same note there is another part of your brain that matters just as much and it's the satisfaction part of your brain and if you want to be able to effortlessly stop eating when you're full no matter how freaking good the food tastes you need to feel physically full and you need to feel full satisfied wise and the satisfied wise is by going slow noticing the flavors noticing the aroma the texture by chewing it by like letting yourself enjoy it that will help you reach that satisfaction bucket because you can eat that and like and if you're saying yeah sometimes like I just eat and eat even though I keep feeling full that's a huge sign that that satisfaction piece is missing even though it tastes amazing you're not like letting it register yeah that's huge <clears throat> so like when she was saying like that dissociation feeling when you're just like ah, like the frantic like yeah and she's saying like catch yourself stop give yourself permission to slowly if that's I don't want that to be a triggering word for anybody but like <laughs> right is not a rule no but just like really get into it like make it a moment and that's when the brain's like oh we're eating something delicious you yeah. know those thoughts are not in the way remember when I was standing over the kitchen sink thinking all these crazy thoughts to myself like why am I doing this like I just want another yeah. piece oh my god it's so good those are the thoughts that get in the way of the satisfaction yeah. Right. Cause they're so they're clouding your experience. So yeah. it, in that situation, I have to say, like Nikki's saying, calm down, just enjoy it. Yeah. And it's interesting. So I have a couple of things I want to say here, but to go on to you, if, if we, if when we said slow down and actually like savor that an amazing taste, if that triggered guilt for you, that's a, a good sign mm-hmm. that you still have some guilt with eating, with pleasure, with things that taste good. And to help and to really work on neutralizing those thoughts around food to help you feel more in control. And, and the second thing I wanted to say was okay. Oh, go ahead. No, I was don't just forget. Say, don't forget what you're going to say. Okay, you go. Okay. Okay. So the pleasure, the slowing down, the savoring. Like when we think about countries like in Europe, Italy, France, these places that eat very decadent food, but they're not seeing the health. A crisis that we're seeing and we're all like but you're eating cheese and bread and mm-hmm. you know olive oil all the things why aren't they why aren't they seeing what we're seeing over here yeah because they slow down they make meals a big deal they they indulge in the decadency mm-hmm. slowly and stop when they're full exactly and so what i was gonna say <laughs> if you're listening and you're like that is my problem. I enjoy food too much. Mm-hmm. I So maybe my old self would have been listening to this and be like, if I s- slow down, or maybe I was eating slow. I I honestly feel like I was like, what's the, what's the term I was saying? Mind, I was mindfully overeating. I was okay, yeah. so into food and still am. <laughs> I deemed myself as somebody that just loved food too much and therefore I had to control it because I couldn't rein it in and I was convinced that I was someone that needed to calorie count because if I didn't, I would just keep eating (laughs) and I'd be so into that moment and I'd be so into it and so loving it. And yes, I had those other situations, but they were less in my journey, to be honest. I would just be like, yeah, bread, (laughs) you know, like whatever. (laughs) I would just be like, I love food always going back. And so if that's you, I just wanted to say, like, we know, we get that 100%. But there's things that are driving that, right? So it's yeah, that's, not the enjoyment that's No, while you're saying up. that, I'm like, there's still scarcity deep yes. down in there because it's too much. It's This food is, you know, the problem, all that scarcity thinking around it. So thank you for bringing that up. But, you know, like, it's funny how our brain works. And from the outside perspective, it's easy for other people, when we're explaining our situations, for other people to become like, it sounds like yeah, you actually are feeling guilt, which is driving the scarcity, even though you're eating 
yeah. larger amounts of food or whatever, it's because there's something deep down in your brain telling you you shouldn't be or you can't be that's actually driving that. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a good segue into the other kind of mindset thing we want to help neutralize this that will really give yourself permission to stop eating it, even though it tastes so dang good, is reminding yourself you can have this food whenever you want. And I know that sounds silly, but that is probably the reason you're overeating that food because we get so in our heads about eating the cake that we truly believe if we this will be the only time we're going to eat the cake. So I might as well eat it all or I'm just going to automatically eat it till it's gone no matter how full I am. Even if I'm starting to feel sugar sick, it doesn't matter. I got to just like finish this slice, you mm -hmm. know, because of because we really do think that. And we and you might not even be straight up saying it in your head. I'm only going to have this slice of cake. And I'm never going to eat cake again. But we it's like a deep down. It's like a us. it's like a reset mentality. I'm gonna do this and then and then yeah and because then. of the guilt <laughs> yeah because of the guilt and the shame all the things we talked about that's driving us to feel bad about eating the cake yeah so we need to again to stop feeling bad about eating cake we need to tell ourselves we can eat cake whenever we want <clears throat> and I know again you guys are probably like that's not gonna help me feel healthy but it does because when you truly know you can have cake whenever you want. When there is cake in front of you, you're not going to overeat it. It's so true. Like, this is so big. I'm smiling because you guys know what I ate for breakfast today. <laughs> <clears throat> I was craving oranges, so I had two small oranges. And then there was pie on the counter. Yeah. And it was already half gone. And I just have not been interested in eating it. What? Pecan pie. And yeah. then I was like, I think I want some of that. And so I had, and so that permission of like, oh, I can have this whenever I want. That's what I'm going back to what you yeah. said. Has to be real. Yeah. It has to be true. And that's that interesting you say that because you haven't eaten it. You haven't been exactly. interested in eating it. Where the old, like, if, if Shana didn't have that true permission, she would mm -hmm. have been eating it oh, whenever yeah. it was offered because of that scarcity thinking. That pie would have been gone within 24 hours. I probably would have eaten the majority of it. Yeah. It's a completely yeah. different situation in my house now. I have all these foods. Yeah. I've got – I made no-bake cheesecake. <laughs> I've got pecan pie. We have date cookies. Like, we've got all – we've got chips. Mm -hmm. You know, like, all the things, all mm -hmm. the time, all the time going. And And I was also someone that – wasn't raised eating a whole lot of fruits and vegetables due to low income. So I never really had a really like love or desire or drive around them. So now yeah. to, to be someone that like genuinely wants oranges first or like craves that is, it blows my mind still. Yeah. It's still. Anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So anyways, I just had like a tiny, small piece of, I just wanted a little, I feel like a few bites. It's so crazy. It's so, yeah. And so, um, yeah, so when you're eating those foods, you can have them whenever you want. You truly have to believe it, like Shana said. And um, I, I was going to say, like, I feel like, too, another thing that I like to tell myself is, and I I would rather stop now and have leftovers mm. to, to be able to enjoy it again because it is so dang delicious. Like, especially those meals that get me in that frantic eating. Like, I love making this ginger beef bowl meal it's like the perfect I think I've talked about before on here like the perfect balance of like savory mm. and sweet and ginger and garlic and I love it on rice and it's just like it's I think the like trifecta of all the different flavor tones makes me want to eat a lot of it but again I remind myself like I'm full now mm -hmm. I can make this meal whenever I want but if I stop now too I can have leftovers and eat it for lunch again tomorrow and get to enjoy it again. Mm -hmm. Same with restaurant foods, kind of making that switch because restaurant foods, I feel like, are a big one where, again, we eat till the plate's gone because it tastes so dang good. But it's like how – I don't – I personally just love being able to have that meal twice. Oh, you know, God, that night yeah. And yeah. then leftovers for the mm -hmm. most part. I mean, sometimes it whatever you order might not be that great. I'm a leftover queen. It's so yeah. nice. Like, like double win-win. Like, I get to eat this again tomorrow or whatever. It's, yeah. it's that's a huge one for me too knowing that it, I get to have the flavors again yeah massive yeah, mm, yes. super important yeah 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 so I know I know again if you're new to food freedom you're like 
so you're telling me to not portion <laughs> to eat allow myself to eat these foods whenever I want how is this helping with my overeating I just want to remind you that portioning things and restricting things and telling yourself you can't eat things isn't helping it's actually making it worse so if you've been struggling with these foods and not being able to stop and even binging it's most likely those things that are leading to it and so we want it we want to switch out of that even if it feels scary it's going to be what helps you Mm -hmm. if you need any extra resources we're going to put them underneath our podcast where you're listening or watching this and uh I did yeah. want to say one thing oh. while I was thinking about the restaurant thing. And I feel like an, another maybe minor thing in the in the really yummy food, drivers could be waste, like not wanting to waste it. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If it tastes really good and you know this is probably your only opportunity, right? Or it's going to go bad mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah, or it's or not you- a good leftover. Yeah. In which case, Nikki's saying is, it's a waste either way, right? Yeah. Don't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, I always out. say, again, I don't want it to sound diet culture but it's a waste whether it's in the garbage or it's a waste to your health. Again, I don't want you guys to feel bad if you choose to eat it in those situations. We, mm. we talk to our clients a lot about like intentionally overeating, which is different than not being able to feel like you can stop, mm-hmm. which is what this what this podcast was about. But once you get to that point in your food freedom journey where you feel 100% in control, you're effortlessly able to stop, there might be a few moments where you decide to intentionally overeat that one food. And that's a whole different feeling because there's no guilt. There's no shame. It's not dissociating. It's just like a super intentional decision in that moment that might happen here and there. Beauty. I liked this one. I like them all. I like them all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and actually, this is a submitted topic. So um, if you have something you want us to talk about, please let us know on our social media or email us because we want to just talk about what you guys want to hear. And if you have a question or a topic, just let us know and we'd be happy to, to go do a podcast on it. That's what we're here for. Have a great yeah. week and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.